without wine. Having another go at this Facebook Live thing. So today I thought I would talk about how and why. Why is it so difficult to make a change? Why is it so difficult to change your drinking, to either stop drinking completely or to cut down? So I'm going to talk about why it's difficult and then I'm going to give you a few tips which might help you make the change should you want to make the change or if you're doing our dry July challenge then uh, these tips might help you as well. So if you're one of these people that thinks that you might be drinking too much then spoiler alert you probably do. If you're one of these people that has a voice in your head, just a nagging voice that gets pretty loud when you have a hangover. If that voice is saying you're drinking too much, you need to change, then I would say you probably need to listen to that voice. But the trouble with that voice, I had that voice for years and years, is that you get other voices coming in, loud voices screeching at you saying, but, but how will I manage without drinking wine? How will I socialise? How will I relax in the evening? How will I cope with restaurants? The, um, the questions go on and those questions are coming from your subconscious. And that's because society has so normalised alcohol that it's everywhere. We're, we're kind of drenched in alcohol globally, not, not just South Africa. So the wine industry particularly has done a stunning job targeting us ladies. So we, we come to believe that we can't possibly have a full and happy life unless we're drinking wine. If you have a look at a Facebook page, you'll think, um, you'll see wine memes everywhere and you'll get the impression that you can't possibly parent a child unless you're drinking mommy juice. It's crazy. So that's, that's where those voices come from. Oh, I'm getting some comments here. Thank you. Trust the quiet voice. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Caroline. Hi there. Um, where was I? Okay. Coming back to you guys uh, soon. So normalization in society. That's, that's why we, we're kind of blocked. So that's why we get stuck. You know, people get stuck because they don't know how. And I'm speaking from experience because I was stuck for 10 whole years. And I was stuck because I wouldn't talk about it. I wouldn't tell anybody. I was ashamed, I suppose. I just wanted to be like those people that had one glass of wine, but I wasn't. So I kept trying to change on my own and I kept failing. And every time I failed, I felt worse about myself. And it was, it was ridiculous. But finally, I learned I had to connect with others and I made the change. So that's what we do at World Without Wine, really. We, we help people with the how. The first thing we do is we connect them with others on the same path. So straight away you realise that it's not just you. It's the way that society is set up. There's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with alcohol because it's addictive, but it's not your fault. And it's easy to make a change. And once you see that other people struggle like you, there's this huge relief. So before I go into my three tips, uh, just three quick questions. Do you drink every day? Do you ever drink alone? And do you drink more than one and a half bottles a week? A week, I said, not a night. If you've got three yeses there, or even two yeses, then I would recommend that you take a month off alcohol. Now, if you're kind of screaming now or laughing or saying uh, a month without wine, I don't think so, Janet then I would say you need to take a month off wine. So I'm now going to give you three tips to help you do that. So my first tip is grab a notebook. Become a scientist in your own life. See this month as a research project. At the end of every day, write up your notes. How did it go? Was it easy? Was it difficult? Did something trigger you? Did you fall off the wagon completely? And if so, why? Just write it all down. And before you even start your, your tracking diary, then uh, write on the front page why you're doing this. And I'll help you out here with your why list. The first thing 
the first reason you're doing this is because you're testing your dependence. Because alcohol is really sneaky. 20% of social drinkers will become dependent over the years. Now, if you can, you want to avoid being in that 20%. I ended up in the 20% and now I don't drink at all, which is fine. But it was, uh, it was a, a sacrifice to begin with. So your why list, uh, apart from dependence, of course, unless you've been hiding under a rock for the last few years, you will know that alcohol is extremely toxic and bad for your health. It's so bad that even taking a month off will improve your health quite dramatically. That's how toxic it is. And if we're pouring it into ourselves every day, we're really causing inflammation and all sorts of nasty things. So you're damaging your mental health. Um, what do they say? Uh, drinking alcohol is like pouring gasoline on your anxiety. It makes us anxious, it makes us depressed, it's a depressant. And the physical damage, I mean, don't get me started on that, but uh, just to, uh, I'll just leave you with the thought that alcohol is now linked. Uh, research has scientifically linked alcohol to seven different types of cancer. So it's not just breast cancer, I've had breast cancer, many ladies in our community have had breast cancer, but seven different types of cancer, that is scary stuff. Okay, so that's your journal. So the second tip is, um, I'm borrowing a phrase from my colleague Lynette, hi Lynette. Um, she says that we must get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I love this and it's so true. We're not put on earth to be happy 24 seven. We have to cope with the ups and the downs. That's all part of being human. But drinkers, us drinkers, we tend to, if we feel a bit down, if we feel anxious, even if we feel happy, what, what do we do? We grab a glass of wine. So over the years, we've become used to numbing our feelings. So when you stop drinking, those emotions, those feelings, they come bubbling to the surface and they can be quite scary. I remember feeling quite tearful and then you feel anger. You think, why do I have to take a month off alcohol? Why can't I just have one glass of wine like, like my friend Mary does? You, know, you, you go through all these emotions and that's where tip number one comes back useful because you can write all those feelings in your diary. And if you write them all down, it's kind of cathartic, so you're processing those emotions. They say that keeping a journal is like having a therapist. If you've already got a therapist, so have two therapists. But if you're in any doubt about the value of journaling, just Google benefits of keeping a journal. It's amazing stuff and lots of recent research. So those are your first two tips. Grab a journal log everything, including your emotions. And number three, get connected. I've already mentioned this, but it's very difficult to make a change alone. So grab one of your friends and ask them to join you on doing a month off alcohol. Now, if you can't find a friend that is willing to do this, I would say that's a bit of a red flag in itself because it means that you're, you're mixing in very boozy circles if nobody can contemplate the thought of doing that. So maybe you need to join our challenge if you can't find someone to do it with you. We're running a dry July challenge at the moment. We've got 44 people on our sober bus as from this morning. We're closing it down at midnight, so you need to join this afternoon if you want to board that bus with us. So it's, uh, it's great fun. We, we send you an email every morning full of tips, tools, motivation. But the most important thing is you're on that bus with 44 other people and you're on a WhatsApp group and you're all chatting away and people are encouraging each other. And it's, it's just uh, great fun and so good for you. So check out our Dry July challenge. Those of you that are already on the challenge, I'm going to read those comments in a minute, so maybe we'll find one or two of you there. So I think that's, that's all that I want to say. So thank you so much for listening. That's, that's uh, I've covered why it's difficult to make a change and a few tips to help you make the change. So let me have a little read now. Um, so Caroline, hi Caroline. Yes, trust quiet voice. 
that's why it's good to be still sometimes. That's why we recommend mindfulness and yoga. Let's let's get in tune with our bodies and what they want. And it's it's not alcohol. Uh, I don't drink every day, but when I drink, I drink and take a full day or two to recover and hate it. Oh, pinks, <laughs> like pinks. Oh wow, was I there? I mean, it's um, that's the thing with us us drinkers, the ones that get into trouble with it. We don't have an off switch. And I think we have to recognize that. I've got this analogy in my head these days. And I think of, um, I think that I've got like a sleeping tiger inside. And if I just have one drink, I'm prodding that, um, that beast and it's rising up and, you know, giving me, it, it's back to normal. And uh, somebody, I don't know if anyone's listened to our podcast this morning. If you haven't, please do. It's called Goodbye to Alcohol. It's on iTunes and everywhere. And I interview Mariki, and she says, I think she was without alcohol for 14 months or something, and then she had just one drink, one shooter, and that was it. She was, she was drinking worse than ever. So she came up with this fabulous phrase that I'm going to steal, and the phrase is, uh, there's no such thing as moderation, only escalation. So once you get to that stage, then, um, you know, you need to do something. So Pinks, please join us, join our challenge. We'd love to have you on our bus. Now Mpumi is on our bus. Yeah, I had a nice chat with Mpumi last week. And yeah, Mpumi was saying she suffers from shame, you know, and I was trying to convince her that she mustn't be ashamed. You know, we've got nothing to be ashamed of. We're in the 20% that got addicted to an addictive substance. So don't be ashamed of me, be proud. You're doing something amazing, something that most of the population wouldn't even consider doing. So stay with us, Mapumi. Hope to see you on Zoom later. Um, right, someone said, uh, oh, that's probably Lynette, isn't it? Hi, Lynette. <laughs> Yeah, the scientists of your own life. Yeah, I like that. That's one of my 66 emails, I think. But yeah, yeah, we need to learn to observe ourselves. What are we feeling? What is it you say, Lynette, that all our actions come from feelings? Very true. Uh, who have we got here? Marika, thankful for our message. Drinking alcohol, not good for anyone in any way. It's, it's absolutely true. And I sometimes feel, Marika, that the whole world is being kind of brainwashed. I mean, three million people globally die from alcohol-related things every year. I mean, three million. When you think because of COVID, the whole world's closed down. And what are we talking about? Half a million people, you know, I mean, it's, it's huge, but um, three million a year and nothing happens. Nothing happens. All that happens is the uh, alcohol industry keep marketing and keep trapping more and more people, more young people. I mean, here in South Africa, when, when we had an alcohol ban for, um, what was it? It was several weeks, that, that ban, and the, the hospitals emptied because, um, you know, suddenly people weren't crushing their cars. They weren't shooting each other. Amazing. We solve our emotions with alcohol, yet we numb ourselves. And the thing is that the emotions just come back. You know, you can't, you need to listen to emotions because that's how we grow. That's how we mature emotionally. Die, hello, die. Yes, journaling. Get those journals out. Um, having a try makes it so much easier. Yeah, I think the joy of having a tribe, hi Colin, nice new member of our tribe there. Um, yeah, Colin, because we stop thinking there's something wrong with us, don't we, when we've got a tribe. We stop thinking, oh, I've got no willpower. And we think loads of people are in this situation, but we're lucky in that we found each other and that we're, we're climbing out of it. So, uh, okay, I think I'd better be quiet now and go away, but thank you, thank you so much for being there, guys. Uh, that wasn't quite as nerve-wracking for me as, as the first time, and I think I've learned where the camera is now, so hopefully I started talking, then it, it went on, probably too soon. But anyway, yeah, members, I uh, hope to see you at 2.30 on Zoom, and if there's anyone new watching us that maybe hasn't made a comment, then just check out our Dry July Challenge, see it as an experiment. You can go to worldwithoutwine.com and click on the Sober Curious Challenge because that's what we're using. 
and uh, I'll also put the challenge on, on the Facebook page in a moment so that uh, you can find it more easily. So thanks so much for listening guys and I'll see you next week. Bye.